Rapmusic.com Rap exclusive. Now I enjoyed you all the teams. Hook the zone in the building. And right now y'all tuned in listening to or watching Culture 6. Y'all already know what it is. Stop playing. Yeah, I like it. Hey, yeah, 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 it's all about experience. <laughs> dot com. Hello? Yo. Yeah, what up? Joel, what up, man? It's Will. What's up, Will? You chilling, man. Thanks for calling. Not a problem, my brother. Thanks for having me. No doubt. How's everything with you? Everything is cool. How you doing over there? I'm good, man. Yo, you're the third Brooklyn dude I got to talk with this month. I'm amped. Nice, nice, nice. You in Brooklyn now? Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn right now. Outside enjoying this night breeze, it ain't that cold enough. <laughs> Enjoy it now, not many left. Word. Yeah, I'm a big fan, so it is a great thing to get to talk to you, man. That's what's up, well, I appreciate that love. Okay, let's get the Dre stuff out of the way so we can move on. You came up on the scene crazy, signs with Aftermath, it looked like the perfect situation. What happened? Um, it actually was a good situation, and things, things didn't work out as far as me staying there as an artist, but it still was a perfect situation because it gave me notoriety. And it was a big post signature from a, a hip hop mogul. But on what happened was it was, it was not more than a simple release date issue. Uh, I just figured that I came in there with, with a high power buzz, you know, the cover of XXL, uh, and some great records. And, you know, when we came to, you know, back for the release date, it was kind of stagnant a little bit. And um, I had to get out of here, that's all. So I had to for release. Uh, he really wanted me to stay as an artist. He's really, you know, he's. I mean, I still want to do it today, you know, co-writing on defense and stuff like that. But um, as an artist, it wasn't the best move for Joel Ortiz. I can't stay still, you know, when your window opportunity opens and you, you gotta jump right through it. That wasn't the best thing for my career. Now, do you spend a lot of time marketing yourself online? Because there's a lot of people on the blogs and forums that have you in their top five MCs lists and say that you might be the next big thing in rap. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, that's crazy, man. That shit is crazy that uh, people got me as a top five MC on the internet. Uh, that shit is fucking flattering and a compliment. And that's the shit that makes me push my pen even harder. But um, to be, I'm going to be a real person. Like, I really don't be having the time to touch, touch base with the internet. Like, every now and then I'll check up. And she was hitting my, you know, my modest space on. She was going on a world star hip hop and all the, you know, hip hop game and all hip hop. She was going on every now and then. But most of the time, man, I'm in the studio keeping them excited. You feel me? I, I mean, as far as me sitting there saying I sit in front of a computer, I be sitting here lying. Um, I do check up because you know it does feel good sometimes to hear people appreciate your music. So I do like to read comments and I do like to hear when you know some people say, uh, you know, oh, oh, you know, when the hate comes through. So I, I can even push my pen even harder. So. Um, I know how instrumental the, the uh, internet was in my career, but I don't, you know, sit in front of a computer. Well, I think I've gotten more requests from people to interview you than anybody else. I mean, people are really interested to hear what Joel has to say, man. Damn, man, that's a blessing, man. Thank you. So they all want to hear about the new album. Talk about that. That's what's up, man. What's up? I, yeah, they won't be disappointed either, man. Uh, the record's coming along crazy. I'm looking to drop on um, Spring uh, of uh, 09. Uh, you know, the record, the name of the record is The Free Agent. I got some uh, good music on that album, man. I really, you know, I'm try- I love The Brick. That's my uh, freshman album. But uh, I'm trying to beat it. You feel me? Yeah, and it's going to be on Koch, right? Yeah, but yeah, yes, I just uh, re- re-signed with Koch last week, actually. So, um, you know, we're, talk- we're already working on the release date stuff now. And, uh, you know, the album, uh, photos and stuff like that. So we're getting things in order. And, uh... You know, picking out the singles and seeing what's going, what's going to be what. Is Memories going to be on the album? Because that's my joint right there. Yeah, Memories is on that record. I love Memories, man. It's just funny you brought that up. I'm back, flipped off the monkey bars, ran up the slide, marker in my pocket was getting vandalized. <laughs> that line made me proud to be from Brooklyn, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> You had tracks with Big Daddy Kane, Styles P, Immortal Technique, even Alchemist came in with a beat. How did you line up such heavy hitters for a freshman release? Yo, to be honest with you, um, you know, through the grace of God, like uh, a lot of the people that worked with me on uh, on the brick, man, were just uh, fans of the music and wanted to attach this up to something that they believed in. Uh, Alchemist, <clears throat> kicked, yo, he just pitched in with a beat, Showbiz came through like, y'all love your stuff. Um, Styles P was a fit, like, these are real genuine dudes that I was working with, like dudes that were just like, you know what, man, this kid got something going on, this kid is real, he's talking something, 
when you know when you listen to him, you, you actually get something from it. Uh, I see where he's going with it. This is dope, and I want to I want to work with him. And um, yeah, that's why it sounded so uh, raw to me. Not too on but I'm gonna say pop fan first before rap. You feel me? And I thought that the, that my album was pretty tight from a listener standpoint. And I, I think a large majority of it was because I wasn't reaching out to heavy produce like heavy people like. You know what I'm saying? I was keeping it real, real street, real, real basic, and I think that's why it got the acclaim that it did. With the internet now, it seems like people create their own credibility. It's like people's reputation is whatever they come up with in their imagination. Talk about that. Yeah, it's not. It's, I mean, you know, hip hop and the streets go neck and neck, and the same thing that's happening in hip hop is happening, in, you know, in the streets. Like you know, back in the days, you know, when you came out on the block. <clears throat> And you was trying to get money, dude. You just couldn't just have your own work, dude. You feel me? Like, you yeah. had to pump for somebody out with somebody. You feel me? You had to actually step the dudes, yo, I know what it is, yo. I'm just trying to get money. I'm trying to get on. And then it might happen, it might not. But, um, you know what I mean? It's, that's the same way it should be with him. Like, if the veterans ain't co-signing a, a lot of dudes, I don't be seeing how dudes be feeling themselves like that. Like, if you ain't getting those, those heavy hitters, like, if you ain't getting the, like, KRX one, the, the sh yo, this dude right here is the truth, like, it, it, it shouldn't it, it should feel as hell. It, it, you're just coming out of left field without no without no movement, without no groundwork, and just thinking you're going to pop up and make a ringtone single. I mean, more power to you, because you probably come from poverty like I came from, and however you're going to get money, you're going to get it. But don't sit there and call yourself ill. You feel me? Like, you know, they had a camp. I'm the, I'm the forefront of the camp, and, you know, I, I'll, I'll hit you guys with this guy by getting him on, like, two or three records, and then let him do what he does. Like, dude, just coming out of left, like, yo, that's, that's not the move. I mean... Like I said, I'm not no hater, I ain't knocking them, but you ain't hot, man, to me. And, and you know, like, I hope, as far as, like, the Big Daddy Chains and, you know, like, the, the legendary people that I worked with, I just feel like, you know, the new class doesn't, you know what I mean, pay homage enough to the dudes that paved the way. I don't think they do their homework and realize who is who and what is what and what, what they mean to, 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 the, to, the, to the business and the, and the art of, of music right now. I mean, just because they're not, you know, the, the popping dudes right now or on top, these dudes paved the way that, you know, like without without a without a Cool G rap, without a KRS One, without a Rock Cam, there is there is no Joel without a Pun. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you gotta you gotta you, every every opportunity you get, man, you gotta remind them dudes that uh you 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 know. And I mean, like as as a man, I know. And I gotta thank them. So what other way than to get on a record? With? And some great records too, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. What's a normal day like now for Joel Ortiz? Um, I can just tell you what every day is for me. I wake up about 7.30, I hit the bathroom, brush my teeth, wash my face, shower up, I go to the gym by about 8.30, 9 o'clock. I'm uh, in the gym getting uh, physically fit, trying to, you know, feel healthy about this big move I'm about to make. I really feel well about this album and uh, the, the uh, direction my career is going to take. So, you know, I'm trying to get in shape and feel good about it and start looking good and, and feeling, feeling like I'm feeling like I'm writing. Uh, I come out of the gym, I get home, I shower up, I get dressed, I hit the studio, uh, and I'm in the studio for the duration of the day. If I don't have to be somewhere to do a club walkthrough or, um, um, or interview somewhere at a radio station, I go right back home. When I'm at home, if I feel up to it, I'll write. If, if not, I'm, I'm pretty much watching Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> What's been your biggest record so far? Wow. Well, um... I'd, I'd, I'd have to lean towards hip hop, uh, just because of the response I get when I go overseas and stuff, and um, and that's my show closer, and the whole fucking building just go erupts when they hear the fucking the, the piano come on. Um, and, and, you know, I got so many people that ask me questions about that record, like, what were you thinking when you wrote that? And the bottom line is, I was just tired of motherfuckers saying, yo, how you feel about the state of hip hop? So, you know what I mean? I was just like, yo, dude, here, here's your answer. Stop asking me that shit. Here it goes, this is it. Hip hop is alive and well. Don't you see your hands in the air? Hands up if you're forever a fan of it. It was a, it was a response record. And, and you know, it just so happened that um, people picked up to it, people felt it. When I talked about, you know, a raw little mix, just mixed case and the feeling that the Nick rappers used to like, when you see the, a certain nigga's name, like, oh shit, this nigga did a freestyle? I'm getting this shit, I wanna, I wanna know what's going on. It, it wasn't so fucking flooded and cluttered, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's what we missed in, in hip hop, the, the exclusivity. Just to get back to the question, I would say hip hop was uh, probably my biggest record. And then, probably fucking bullshit because I get a good response on that record too when I perform it. Check out part two when Joel answers the question everybody's been asking. So, all the people that's running about Slow Down, if you were to ask me right now, what is, is it going to happen? <laughs> www.coach6.com.